Here we are, here we are. With some caveats. We're here at Olme with a kind of a patched together setup. Looks like it's working. There are a few things that are going to work against us here. It's all patched together. We've got extension cords running to extension cords. <laughs> the camera, one camera's outside with another extension cord running to it. But it looks like we're up and running. And we're on Wi-Fi to the computer at the other end of the studio here. The Ethernet cable that I had running down here has been cut upstairs by the NTT people sometime last week, last month. But we're here. We're up and running. We're up and running. So I thought what might make more sense today, because I'm just doing a simple job, I'm going to be doing embossing this morning. Instead of putting this view full and the outside camera small, let's switch them around. Let's leave the outside camera large and the inside camera smaller today. It's okay. And then what I can do, because absolutely nothing is going to be happening out there, you won't see anything going on at all, uh, I can go outside partway through, we can move the camera to a different place, get a different view, we can move it again to a different view partway along during the stream. What you're seeing, just to give you some background here, I'm sitting here with this camera just outside that window. Well, let me move this camera for a second. Give you an idea of the geography here. Okay, slight earthquake coming while I move this around for a second. I'm in an alcove just above my head here. That side is the original room that was indoors. This area used to be outdoors. I took the major windows out and I built myself a bay window set up here. in what was the original balcony. And looking through the side of my bay windows, I've got a window on the side, this looks through into the balcony as it goes down the building. It, the balcony goes down and down and down and down all the way along the building. So I'm sitting in what used to be outside. And as I sit here, this is the printing and carving bench. It's set up for printing right now. In front of me are the windows with natural light. And looking to my left, I see the view that you see in the other camera. This is what I would see. I'm sorry, it's all reflecting here from inside, but I see the river down to one side. And then to my right, over here, there's another window and it looks down the river to the right. That's now gone. I can't see anything because it's a jungle. In the few years that I've been in Asakusa, the five, six, seven years I've been in Asakusa, this place has turned into an absolute jungle out there. There's been no maintenance done on it whatsoever for like uh, six or seven years. And it's kind of an idea, dream, whatever you name it, to get back here for a few weeks, get some clippers, and get years of maintenance done. I've also prepared a little bit of fish food. We have some pasta with cod roe sauce. If you don't tell them, I won't tell them what they're eating. And partway along the stream here, we can get outside, we'll point the camera down directly into the water, and we'll drop some goodies into the water and see what we can see. But yeah, like you said, it's a jungle out there, an absolute jungle out there. But this is how I made all my prints. The Solitudes prints, the Beauties of Four Seasons prints, everything. They were all made in this room, sitting at this bench. I had a, I changed it out, took away the car printing bench, put in the carving bench, changed it back and forth, back and forth. This is where it all happened, and it's all now. It's still here, but this desk, I cleaned off the dust from this desk. <laughs> when was the last time I printed here? I can't remember. No idea. No idea. Okay, the, the actual work today is nothing. It's, an, it's another embossing. I've got to do... Kubota-san sent some uh, prints. So I have to emboss them. It really is a cool place. It's not without its problems. I know 
To live next to a river this close means you got to deal with water. And of course, so it's damp. It's damp, damp, damp. Not the best place for a workshop that stores lots of woodblock prints, of course. So what we do in the building here, the building is four stories tall. We are in the bottom of what are four stories near the river. So the bottom two stories down here, they're made of concrete. It's a, it's a massive concrete structure. We keep all the things that we don't want to get burned and that don't get affected by the damp. In other words, the wood blocks are all stored above me on B1. The wood block doesn't care so much, but the finished prints that we make, we can't keep in this environment because they would get damp. So the finished prints go up to the fourth floor, and that's a wide, airy, bright space. It's bizarrely hot right now, but it's hot and dry. So the prints stay up there, and that's a wooden frame structure, the top two floors. So it could burn down. It could burn down and we would lose all our finished prints that we've made. It doesn't matter. As long as the blocks don't burn, we can always make more. So the fireproof area, fire resistant area has the blocks, the damp resistant area has the finished prints upstairs. I can't do a walk around for you today. The cameras are all wired in place. This is from Kubota-san. You've seen them before. You've seen this many, many, many times. We are now up well over 2,000 copies of this. And the blocks are just pumping away. This is our second most popular thing that we have ever printed. You know what number one is. Let's boot this up a bit so you can see what's happening here. This is just back from Kubota-san. And let's have a quick look to the back. Are there any cut corners? He's got one marked with an X. Yeah, it's a bit faint. This would have been the, the you know, test copy. That's also a bit misregistered. So the back few copies. Yeah, looks like maybe there's two copies out. The rest are look, look okay. Okay, let's get to work on this. Also, you can't see from here, as I sit on this bench, I, the, the balcony, and my legs are in what used to be the balcony area. I am right under where the original window was. So behind me is the room. And as part of this platform, I built in drawers that go under into the balcony. Now on the right-hand side of it is a drawer where I keep, where I used to keep all my barons. They're now all, mostly all gone. The printers are using them at different places. This is Ome, yes, this is Ome. In a patched together stream here. Oh, can I, we also have a problem here. Yeah, look at this, look at this, look at this. This, <laughs> the printer's bench is angled. Normally the Baron would sit here. You put your pigments on, do your printing, put your Baron back on the pad. This pad hasn't been used for I guess it's seven years, no idea. And it has gone totally rock hard. It used to have oil on it. It was a soft pad you put the Baron on, but now <laughs> it's not gonna work. <clears throat> okay, let's rethink here. Seven years, my God. Where's my water? A sec. I'll need some water for this pad. One second, I'm trying to find my water. What did I do with it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, You aren't going to see any high heeled ladies here at all, of course. <laughs> so let's use that side for the water. 
Let's just put the Baron up here out of the way. It's okay. Sometimes, did I do some printing here last year? What did I do here last year? I don't, I don't think I did any printing. I don't remember. I say, I say seven years since I've worked here steadily, but I don't remember if I've come out here to do small jobs. I don't remember. Excuse me. Okay, let's do a bit of work. Then we'll take the camera outside. We'll move around a little bit. And uh, then maybe halfway through, let's look at some fish. Let's feed some fish. Then uh, also we have show and tell. I brought a show and tell from. I brought a show and tell with me from Asaksa. And it is. Whatever. Let's talk about it when we get to it. What's that meme we've got here? You know, blow your socks off. We are going to leave your socks in this river. It's one of the most beautiful things we've ever received. It came in two days ago. I made a mistake. I received it in the morning about nine o'clock in the mail. I took it straight upstairs to show the printers. They didn't get any work done for like an hour and a half, two hours. Uh, these people, they're paid by the amount of work they do. <laughs> so, so I cost them something like you know, an hour or an hour and a half of missed, uh, missed labor. Someone's asking, is it hard to leave here? Do I like Asakusa just as much? I don't even know what to think anymore. I came back here. Just a minute, let me get this sorted out first. Hang on one moment, please. Just a second. No, that's wrong. That's wrong. This same board has been used for a lot of different stuff. And that's wrong for this print. Just a moment here. If I screw this up, I'm in big trouble. That says Ukiyo Heroes, that corner. That looks better. Okay. Let me put some tape on. I know about where where do I live and where do I like and I don't I really don't know you know for me it seems that when I go somewhere the previous places just sort of go out of mind they, they're not you know I can't keep more than one location at a time in my mind where do I live I came back here, walked around. Oh yeah, hey, this is the place I used to live. Is the feeling, you know? It's not. This is where I live. It's, this is where I used to live. So there's no sense that this is my home. I think we talked about this before, you know. I even got that when I went over to Vancouver. You know, I was walking around Vancouver and of course this is the place I used to live. Well, that makes sense because it was 35 years ago. It was the place I used to live. But then when I came back to Asakusa, I got off the plane at the airport, headed back, walked back to Asakusa with my bag. I'd been away for seven weeks. I'm walking along and have the feeling, yeah, this is the place I used to live all that long time ago. So I don't know. I really don't know where I am. We've, we've talked about this before. I think I'm sort of mentally homeless. I just don't have a place that is is my head in the way we're okay I don't know. I think we can see this right here we are it says Ori Buru Suri Kubota Kimichi and this is my job for the next half hour or so to, uh, to get these all embossed. Not so interesting to watch, I'm sorry. As I said, we'll take, we'll move the outside camera around bit by bit as we go along. If you, if you jog me on it, you can move the camera. I 
actually for me here this is now quite dark the outside light is beautiful but right here this is really dark we do have lights there are switches behind me where are they can't remember where they are there are switches behind me yeah which pop on some spotlights and during the day it's not going to make any difference in the evening they work very 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 well Someone's asking about, wasn't there something about the person from across the stream? Well, he, Tatamura-san, he's passed away now, quite a long time ago. He passed away shortly after I went to Asakusa, I think. I can't remember exactly. His wife is still there, and one of his sons still lives in the place. I, I don't know, I haven't been here, whatever. And he used to be constantly building and fixing and cutting and building and doing all kinds of stuff. So there was constant action across there. Now it's jungle. There's been absolutely nothing done. I saw earlier this morning, it seems they've got a little garden there. The house, and directly around the house is okay, but all the rest of the wide yard, it's now abandoned. So I really can't see much anymore. When I look out the window now here, all I can see is green. I mean, that's nice, but I can't see any scenery or anything, so. And the river itself, we're looking down now from my window, and what you're seeing there in front of the camera, these trees and stuff are on my side, and I have been delinquent. I have not done my maintenance properly. That tree you see here coming across the river is not supposed to be there. The river is not my property, and we are not allowed to encroach on it at all. And we're supposed to be keeping the space above the river clean. And we're also supposed to be keeping the space at the edge of the river clear. So that if there's a typhoon or something, there's no garbage or, or stuff that blocks up and builds up and or could cause a flood. And that tree is, is quote unquote illegal. If a good heavy rainstorm or typhoon came along, it could wash the base of that tree over. The tree falls down, another tree hits it, blocks. You've got a quick dam, water backs up, and floods all the nearby houses. The water channel is supposed to be kept as clear and as clean as possible. And if I don't do something about that, at some point, the city crew is just going to come along with their chainsaws and do it. Well, the tree's been there ever since I lived. I moved in here 22 years ago, and the tree would have been there. I don't remember exactly the details when it started. But when I was here, I trimmed. I kept stuff trimmed back and trimmed back. If this camera had been here seven years ago, we would not be looking at the river clear and clean, and there would be no overhanging vegetation on either side, because I kept my side clean, and Tamara-san kept his side clean. But now it's the jungle. Nobody is touching this stuff. and all's well until it's not. You're talking about nature took it back in seven years. Actually, I learned, you know, I've been here now, like I said, 22 years. In the early years I was here, Tamara-san was a vigorous and active. He was a retired guy, but he took care of his land. He was vigorous and active. And when I moved here, I remember there was a bunch of trees, a sort of not, it was a line of trees on the side of the river. If you can see the top right-hand side of the picture here, there's the river, 
there's an embankment goes up about three meters, about 12 feet or so, like two people standing on above each other. So it's about a three meter embankment. And then it levels off to the right. You can see some sunshine there. That's a grassy area. And it slopes up bit by bit to his house. And he had a row of trees along the edge of that embankment. Maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever I could see all in a row. And when I moved into this place, I was really, well, wow, I've got such beautiful greenery. It's like having a private park outside, you know. And I guess the first winter I'd been here or something, I don't remember the detail, or in the springtime, he and a bunch of friends came home with chainsaws, and they just cut them all down. Then bang, 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 chop them up into pieces, and they threw it in the river, and the next typhoon took it all away. And I'm like, I'm like, you know, frustrated about this. And I learned, it, to him, these are weeds. This guy, he's, he was born in that property, and at this time he would have been, say, 60 years old. I, mean, I don't know, whatever. So he's been there, born, and he knows something that I didn't know, that that stuff was weeds. And if he lets them grow too big, they're going to collapse the river embankment. They're going to fall on his house. They're no good. They're dangerous. So they got a little bit too big. He cut them all down. And Dave is thinking of those trees as a lifetime. Oh, my God, they're gone. I will never see such a thing again in my life, you know. And it wasn't like six or seven or eight or nine years later and it was like they're back and they grew and they grow so fast and it was like somewhere around whatever nine ten eleven years later and i realized hey this is just like it was when i moved in they grow so fast and i get the idea to him it's just weeds cut the weeds down and you know they'll grow back and it's you and me against the, the fight you know no, they were dangerous. They were dangerous. We've had lots of discussions in the subsequent years about the neighborhood, people who have been here much longer than me. Most of these people were born here. I'm the, the beginner to them. And yeah, they're, they, Dave, you're looking at nature. Oh, it's untouched nature. Let's don't spoil it. Let's leave nature. But they live in it, and they realize it's a fight. And if they don't fight back, it will just take over everything. And you've got to cut and cut and cut and cut all the time. Where city boy Dave came in here, don't, don't cut that, it's a tree, oh my God. <laughs> and they're just laughing and laughing and laughing, you know. You need an axe and a chainsaw, otherwise it's impossible. You can't be romantic about a tree, you know. It's, it's context, it's place and time. There are trees, sequoia trees in California, we shouldn't cut down. I get it, I get it, I get it. But don't get romantic about some specific tree, because these are dangerous creatures to be in an urban environment. You know? And also, they grow back so much faster than you have any idea. It took me a while to learn this, you know. Oh my god, they're cutting another tree. Oh, it's the end of the world, you know. That's not how it works. And it's my turn. I have got, you know, I've got to somewhere in the next year or so or something. Maybe this summer is going to be the typhoon time when it falls, it drops this tree, and I could be in trouble. So it's my turn, actually, now to get out there with a saw and take that thing down. Yeah, they come back faster than you could ever believe. Well, I'm going to visit the haircut lady. That's an interesting point. I don't, actually, I don't think I have time. I'm not here to play around, you know. Today is work. I, don't, I really would rather this hadn't been a stream day because we have so much work to do today. And I was thinking, actually, of putting a note on, sorry, stream canceled, just can't do it today. But, but my, uh, my other character got in the way there. So today it's the final, it's the end of our financial year. Tonight at midnight is the end of our financial year, and it requires a whole bunch of things to get done. Now that we are an official company, it's much more strict than when Dave was just fooling around on a business. So 
if you know anything about business, you know that end of a financial year means you have to value all your assets, and that means inventory. We have to count everything, and I mean everything. We have to count it and value it. And that's why I'm here today. The girls back in the Saksa, it's funny, I don't quite know how this has worked out. Aoyama-san and Okamura-san and Watanabe-san, the three of them are going to do a Saksa, and I'm here to do Ome, <laughs> and it's four stories of junk. So. so, no, today is going to be a working day. What I might do, it depends how it goes this afternoon, if I plug through it well and it looks like I'm doing well, yeah, I might skip over and get a haircut. But if not, then I'll just, then I'll, whatever, that's it. I'll just do what I can do and get back to Asakusa tonight. I don't want to miss my swim tomorrow. It timed out nice. Today, the swimming center, my fitness center, is closed. They're always closed on the last day of the month. So I was sad that I was going to miss my pool today, but then I realized they're closed. I'm not missing anything. You have no idea how much junk there is here. We're talking about, uh, what, is, what is it? I came in 1986. We're talking about 30 years of accumulated, you can say junk, whatever, but it's all actually part of our business now. I go to a local onsen that there isn't really anything like that around here. Ome now is quite a depressed area. It's losing population very, very quickly. I don't know the, low, the latest figures, the last number I heard, and this would have been, I don't even know now, three, four, five years ago, the notice came from the city hall one spring that we've now reached the 10% level. 10% of the homes in Ome are empty, abandoned empty. But that was a few years ago. So it's going to be much more than that now, way more. I have no bed. I have no bed anywhere. I don't have a bed in the Saksa. I don't have a bed here. No, no. To, to sleep last night, I pushed some boxes out of the way and just lay down on the tummy mats. So is the heron going to come? Quite possibly, of course, you know, when I used to be here every day, just every day a wildlife came. Absolutely. The weather is still heat wave, and I think we are now into the area of uh, no records. Every day, the last few days, every day Tokyo has broken records for highest temperatures recorded at this date. We're still in June. We've never had this before in June. Never. Never. Turn a place into a B&B. &B. Yeah, right. And what are we going to do for food? The nearest supermarket is by bicycle from here down the hill, down the hill, across the river, up the hill, up the hill. In front of the station, there's a supermarket. Not a very good one. There's a 7-Eleven, or there was. I don't know if it's still there. Get on my bike, 15, 20 minutes to the east of here. There's a 7-Eleven. Here's our embossing, Horiburu, Horibu Suri Kubota Kenichi. And again, for those of you who don't know, this is one of our best-selling prints. We've got another batch of 80 here from Kubota-san. These blocks now have done about 2,000 copies. And they are still fantastic, fantastic condition. This is one of the best success stories in the history of woodblock printmaking. <laughs> 
Do people have cars? Yes, no car, no life, nothing. Everybody's got a little mini car that they roll around in the back streets and stuff like this. No cars, no life, nothing. It's like, a, it's like a living in the countryside. I don't have a car. When I left here, it's bicycle. I just use my bicycle. And if I came back here, I would use the bike again. There's no more buses. There used to be a university, had a campus up on the hills behind us here. That closed, I don't know, that closed 10 years ago or so. So there's no bus anymore out here. So you've got, to be, uh, you've got to be able to take care of yourself. You need a car to go into town, do your shopping, come back out. So it's, it's beautiful in terms of quiet. If you've got a job and stuff, you're okay. But for convenience, if you've got kids, school, oh my God, how far is it to the nearest elementary school? It's past the 7-Eleven down there. 7-Eleven is 15, 20 minutes by bike, and the elementary school is on the other side of it. Tough. This is why people are leaving. All, the only people left here are old folks. That's, they're happy. They've been here all their life. That's all. No kids, kid, kid who say was born here, the two girls who live next door, they wouldn't consider coming back to Omeda Lily or rocks in their head. They're gone. One of them's in Tokyo, one of them's in Yamanashi, she's a jewelry designer. The kids are never gonna come back to a place like this. The internet's wonderful. The internet everywhere in Japan, no matter how rural you are, you have that optical fiber connection. I said I'm on Wi-Fi today simply because I'm, I'm two stories down from the router. The internet here is not a problem. You've got you know, gigabit ethernet. Well, if you've got a job and you don't mind like going out by car to buy your food and stuff from supermarkets, you're okay. This is fine. Beautiful, beautiful. <coughs> And the train, Ome Station, has direct express trains to Tokyo Station. From Ome Station to Tokyo, it takes whatever. The fastest train, what is it, 52 minutes? So from Ome Station, but that's from here. For me to get there, that's 20 minutes away. But there is access to Tokyo. The guy who lives next to me, the next house, he works in Tokyo. He goes, he commutes six days a week. So it's, it's doable. He's got a little scooter. In the morning, about 7.30 or so, he takes his scooter over to the station, drops his scooter in the parking lot, takes the train down to work, sits there reading something. In the evening, because rush hour is so bad, he doesn't try and come home at rush hour. He just stays at work till 9, 9.30 or so, and then takes a train home, gets his scooter. And I hear him on the days I heard him last night, it was about 10.30 or so. His scooter comes in from the station. So he's out of here whatever, 7 to 10 or 6.30 to 10.30, 7.30 to 10.30, whatever hours. That's his day. So he basically just sleeps here. His family never sees him. The kids are long gone, but his wife never sees him. Well, maybe now he must be about ready to retire, I think. He's a bit younger than me. I'm 70, so maybe he's going to be getting to the end of this pretty soon. His house might be now paid for. It was on a 35-year mortgage and it was built in, when were these built? These were built in 1994. 1994 with a 35-year mortgage. What does that give you? No, he's not clear yet. Oh, somebody got a map? Yeah, I should have done that. I'm sorry. Has somebody got a good Google uh, Google map reference? I should have thought of that today. I'm sorry.
one thing I had been afraid of while coming out here, you know, it's really nice and quiet. But, 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 there's the 8 o'clock to 8 o'clock rule. You know, you keep quiet 8 to 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. is nothing, no noise. And it's sort of supposed to be the same in a sax as well. But out here, partly because of the, the thing I mentioned before about trees and stuff like that, there's lots and lots of garden and tree and maintenance going on. And it's really not unusual, and I was afraid this might happen today. I thought what might happen was we'd start our stream at 8 o'clock, and then at 8 o'clock, some guy across the river there, he's waiting, he's got his watch, 8 o'clock, come, fires up his chainsaw, and away we go. And that happens all the time out here, all the time. So even, I mean, years ago when I lived here, it was touch and go. On any given day, are you going to have a peaceful day of work and streaming? or, you know, whatever, peaceful day of work and enjoying your river, or is it going to be weed eaters, chainsaws, construction sounds, whatever. And it's touch and go. Today we seem to be lucky, or maybe with the depopulation, maybe it's getting quieter and quieter and quieter. Tamrasan's gone, so his chainsaw is gone. It's just you and me and the birds. The other thing about summertime too is any day now, any minute now, because it's so hot, they're going to start. They're going to pop up from their soil, get into the trees. <coughs> the semi are going to start any day now. Sammy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who goes down? Sunagasan. He's my neighbor two doors down. The neighbor next door, as I said, he's gone all day every day in Tokyo. His wife also works, so that house is deserted during the day. But the next couple down is retired. He's uh, my age, I guess, just about my age. And he plays guitar as a hobby in his little room downstairs. And he will have the doors open right now. Very, very faint. He's just lightly playing. It's kind of classic guitar. There's no, there's no, uh, no we're not talking death metal here. <laughs> he's also, he wouldn't want to be broadcast. <laughs> he's having fun. <laughs> but uh, if I, if I meet him later and say, hey, we were streaming, caught your rehearsal, you know, <laughs> he would be, so if you can hear it, it's just as well. It's okay. He's a nice guy. Very nice guy. Some years back, uh, whatever, he's a nice guy, nice guy. The birds and stuff too are interesting. You know, I mentioned that I, where I am here used to be outside, and this used to be a wall. So the outside balcony, I hadn't known this, but it turned out that during the years this house was built before I bought it. It was built six, seven or so years before. I bought it in 2000. It was built in 1994, I think. So it was built about six years before I bought it. 
And during that time, unknown to me, in this outside balcony, north facing, a bird had built a, a nest at the, un, under the eave of the outside balcony. <clears throat> I, it was a seasonal thing. I don't know what kind of bird it was. It's a, I forget the name, but it was, it's a, whatever, anyway, bird. And I had, I had taken my windows out, built the thing, and put this in during the winter. And the next spring came along, and this bird came along to try and build its nest again in the same place that it had always built it. And I hadn't really even known this was going on. I had just built my windows, hadn't even cleaned up on the inside. And one day a bird comes along and sort of taps at the window here. It's actually trying to get inside. I didn't know it was trying to get here to start building its nest again. It bangs on the window, flies away, comes back, bangs on the window, flies away, tries banging the other ones. It tries everything it can do. It is desperately trying to get into this space. And, you know, put two to two together, we can see the mark of the, the nest that used to be there. And it banged against the window so hard it started to leave blood. It left bits of blood, it left bits of feathers as it banged against this glass. I mean, it knew the glass was there. It wasn't one of these things where the bird is flying into a window and it doesn't see it. It knew the barrier was there, and it was just banging it against the barrier, trying to get inside. And once we realized what was going on, then we got a decision to make. Aha! Okay, I see, I see. Sorry, bird. I mean, we've got in your way here. These windows open. You can see the, the window inside here is open. So now what do we do? Do we do nothing? Or do we open the window and let him come inside and build a nest here? And that means keeping the window open then for the next three, four, five months until the bird's done. And then next year, and next year, and next year. But what we decided to do, and I thought, look, I can't really be responsible for this. Leave this window open, mosquitoes, oh my God, what am I going to do, you know? So we decided, I decided to do nothing. And after a while it gave up. I didn't find a dead body on the ground here. After a while it gave up and went somewhere else. And that must happen in real life. I mean, you know, a tree falls in a forest. That was the tree where last year this bird made its nest. Shogunai, this sort of thing happens. So thinking about that side of it, I thought the best thing to do for me is just to do nothing. He will, she, he, she, whichever it was, she, he, Will, after a while, instincts will say, look, it ain't going to happen this year, give up and go away. And that's what happens. So. But it was a bit sad. Well, that reminds me, there's another video. Okay, somebody, can I, can I ask you to do some homework for me? Can you go to my YouTube channel and go right all the way back to almost the beginning of the YouTube channel 10 years ago? Oh, I better find it. There's no way. It's uh, too much to ask somebody else to find it. Hang on a sec. Just, I can do this in one second. There's a video taken in this spot, right where I'm sitting right now, a bajillion years ago. Here we are. Concert for the printer. Let me pop this in copy link address. I can't do this in... I'm going to have to go back to my browser. There you are. There's a YouTube video taken with the camera in front of me here, looking back, and behind me, Teiko-san, one of our printers who was working at that time, was sitting behind me here, and the window was open. We weren't using the next room as a workshop yet, but the balcony right in front of me, a bird came and sat on this balcony. And Beep, 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 started to sing. It was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. If you've got the bandwidth, play that video while you're watching this. <laughs> no. I, I pasted it. I went to a browser. That's what I was saying. I, I can't. I'll try pasting it here. No, I can't. I can't paste here. I went to a browser and pasted it in. That This is my problem. Yeah, the room behind me is large, and then the room next door. We've got quite a space here. This is B2, the second basement. 
there's actually B3, there's a level below me, but it's not usable, it's structural of the building. Try clicking with the right mouse button over the chat, control clicking, there is a paste option, look at this. Who gets the egg? Who gets the egg? Nidstang monolith. Why would they do that? Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Chocolate eggs. <laughs> Control V doesn't work. That's a normal paste on a Mac. Control V does nothing, but pull up a contextual menu. It works. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Intuitive, whatever, not to this guy with 40 years experience on computers. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Thank you. Now that I think about it, maybe up in the menu at the top, edit menu. No, there's no paste. If I click into the chat, look for paste up in the edit menu. No, there's copy, but no paste. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yeah, that bird. Isn't that bird wild? Crazy. And we had a camera running. We were taping. We were recording at the time, you know. What is it? It's a muku, mukudori? No. I can't remember. Maybe it's in the YouTube comments. Maybe somebody told me what the bird is. I don't know. Corey Gami, command control, same thing. Not on this computer, it isn't. <laughs> Are we running out of time? What's going to happen here? Just a minute. I'm, I've got about, uh, I'm two-thirds of the way through this pile. It's 8.47. I want to feed some fish. We've got show and tell. I better keep going. I better boogie here. Too much talk, not enough work. Also, already today, I am stinky sweaty. There's not a breath of wind today. It's going to be another one of those whatever 35, 36, 37 degree days. And uh, maybe this, we're going to finish the stream about 9.30. The staff's going to come about 10. So I've got about a half an hour. As soon as the stream finishes, I'm going to strip. Bang! I'm going to be in that water. It's beautiful. Total. Super clear, clean. The cleanest water in Japan coming right off the mountain, filtered through all the leaves. And any of the girls here, they just think I'm nuts. What? You went in the water? Ooh! They're crazy. They're crazy. Actually, we are above the source from Tokyo. The, some of the water passing through the river right in front of me right now will end up in the Asakusa Tap. This is the Kiyomi Gawa, the Kiyomi River. A uh, clean, beautiful, Kiyo, clean, me, beautiful, clean, beautiful river. Interesting name. It runs into the Tama River, just below me here. The Tama River then flows down past Haneda Airport. But partway along the Tama, Tama River, in a place called Hamura, which is the next town where I used to live, there's a vast water intake for the Tokyo water system. And it's been there since Edo time. It was the first major water intake built for, uh, for, for Edo times. And it was built, you can look it up. Look up uh, Tamagawa Josui. That's the Japanese name. And it was built in Edo time. And it took water from the river just below me here over to Edo 
for use in town, drinking, firefighting, you know, you name it, whatever. And it still is part of the municipal water intake these days. It's been upgraded, upgraded, upgraded. So part of this water will end up going past Haneda Airport into the sea, and part of it will end up going into Tokyo's municipal water system. I peed in it last night. I think they can handle that. I got here from Tokyo last night. You know, I came out just before rush hour. Got here about seven o'clock in the evening. Had my dinner from seven to eleven, and then choop, in the water. It was so nice. The temperature has been—it's been thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty, whatever. I got in that water last night. We're talking about this as a river. For our American friends, whatever, they would be calling this a creek, I guess. I don't know what Europeans call it. In Japan, this is a river. It's big enough to be a river. It's about five, six meters wide. It flows all year long. There's no disruption in the water all year long. It's, it's actually a river. But because of what it is, it doesn't get very deep. And they've put little, I don't know, control, flood control, they've put little flood control weirs here and there, here and there, here and there. So behind each weir, the water gets a little bit deep, maybe knee high, sometimes waist high, but then the next typhoon comes in, fills it with gravel. And there's been no maintenance done for decades now. So the weirs are still there, but behind each one it's full of gravel. So the river is flat to the weir, drops off, flat to the weir, drops off. So there's no deep places anymore. So you can't swim. There's nowhere here in this river where I could actually sit and swim for a while. Somewhere, some of the times below the weir, the typhoon water comes over and digs it out. So you get a bit of a, a bowl there. And I'm in the middle of two of those, just above where this camera is. We can't really see it, where that bright area is at the top right here. There's a bowl where the water coming over the weir has dug it out. And I can, I can get submerged in there. If I walk down into it, it goes over my head. So I can, and beautiful sunshine comes in, so I can get relaxed and cool and, and, and uh, everything on in this river, but I can't actually swim. There's no way to get exercise. But it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. What I want is just the water, the water. There's another place, and maybe again, the mods can put this in. If you go to the woodblock.com website, I should have prepared these links. Go to woodblock.com, go to the front page, look for the diversions section. And in the diversions section, you will see a soundscape. And that was recorded right here as I sit here without me talking. I put the microphone on top of me left to right, opened the left right windows, and I did a woodblock printing session for. 30, 40 minutes, and we hear the sounds of the printing, and partway along a river semi, kawasemi, uh, what do you call them in English? It's the bird that dives into the water to catch fish. What's it called? Kingfisher. A kingfisher came along, and one of the kingfishers that lives here, and he went left and right and left and beep, 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 look it up, look it up, look it up, look it up, look it up. Somebody's got it. Annabelle, thank you very much. More eggs. I'm going to run out of eggs today. Thank you very much. Don't look at it now. Later on, headphones, sit back. And that's, that was my life day after day after day. And I gave that all up for a saksa. Almost done. What have we got time? 8.54. No! Crap. Get going. Get going. Get going. I'll keep going till 9. We'll cut at 9. We'll do some fish feeding. Someone says, was it worth it to go to Asakusa? I don't know. Changed my life, of course. Well, what changed my life was Ukiyo Hiro. So that was happening here in Ome. I don't know, the Asakusa experiment, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know.
Oh, somebody's mentioning NHK World. That was something else I was going to ask, going to mention about today. <laughs> we, I, I had an interesting experience the last couple of days. In the last stream, we talked about the fact that I had been hired for an NHK job years ago to visit the Shirakami Sanchi, the big nature forest in northern Japan. And we had made a program, but unbeknownst to me, they had felt that my version of the program was a total failure. They broadcast it, didn't say anything to me, paid me for it, broadcast it, didn't say anything, but it turned out that they had felt it was a total failure. And it was such a failure that a few years later, they sent another crew and a different host up to the same area to redo the program. <laughs> I had no this. So we were chatting about this a little bit on the last stream, and somebody sent me a link, the other one. And so Koringami's got the links here. So we now have links to both versions of the program. The link that Koringami has just posted now is the link to my version of the program made in 2012. And also there's a link here. Koringami can maybe post that link, or, or do I have it? The link to the to the other version, the version that NHK did as their second version. Here, I've got the link here. Hang on a sec. I can use my newfound magical powers of pasting into this chat here. Command, control, paste. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So here's two. Don't look at it now. Save this for later when you have absolutely nothing else to do. There's the two versions of the program. My version, which was, was first, and then they did a retake. Without telling me, they did a retake a bunch of years later. And when I saw it the other day for the first time, I was so happy. Someone's asking, did the other guy do the emotion thing? They didn't take any chance. The producers did the emotion thing. They built it into the program. They built in the spiritual and emotion. And you can see in the program, they made him go along with it. He probably had nothing to do with this. They said to the guy, here, stand against this tree and hold your hands back. <laughs> It's so cool. They didn't take any chances. They wrote it into the script, and the guy just did what he was told. And if it had been me, I would have done what I was told and done it. <laughs> so, so I'm not getting on the other guy. He did a fine job, I guess, whatever. We were both amateurs. It was my very first NHK travel program, and it looks like it's his first program, too. But whatever. It's just so much fun. Knowing the backstory for me, it's so much fun. They spent all that money. These are expensive, you know. They hire a professional crew, camera, sound, accommodations, plane flight, make the program, pay everybody, get permission to go in the special forest. No, nobody ever said anything. I said, I didn't even know it was a failure at the time. I knew she'd felt frustrated. You know, I tried to do what she was doing. I was trying to be a good boy. I wasn't saying, no, I don't do that stuff. I didn't do that. I tried to go along with it. But I wasn't able to do what she wanted. You know, Dave, you know, give me your spiritual feelings. And I had to say, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't have any spiritual feelings about this. So I knew she wasn't happy, but I didn't feel like I had been a total failure at all. So anyway, getting sidetracked again. Okay, tell me, it is nine o'clock, so I tell you what, let's do this. There's other things I want to do on this stream, so let me do this. I'm going to leave you for a minute. I'm going to turn off for a moment the printing bench here, and I'm also going to turn off my mug shot here in a minute. I'm going to go outside and grab the outside camera, and you're going to feel a bit of earthquake stuff. I think you'll be able to hear my voice because the outside camera does have audio. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab the outside camera. First, I might pan around a bit here and there so you can see the outside. And then I'm going to try and put the camera facing directly down into the river. Right, I'm going to try and point it like this, directly down into the river. If I can find a good spot for that, I will then get my little carton of fish food. And let's see if we can attract some visitors to come here. So this is going to be, I'm not going to go in the river my no, I don't think I'm going to go down there. But anyway, whatever. Let's do this. I'll set the camera up. So let's put these, these cameras out. Just, I don't know, play with me for a while. Let's go and have a look into the river and see what we can see. I'll be back here 10, 15 minutes from now. Let's give it a shot. And first of all, I won't be down the rusty ladder. I'm just going to be right outside here pointing it down and feeding them from up here. If I go down there, they'll run away. 
Sí, señor. First check, can we hear me? I don't know. I have no feedback because I can't see the chat, but okay, let's see. Bit of a earthquake here while I while I move things around. This is looking off to the west. As I said, normally we'd be able to see all the way up the river, but because it's become so overgrown recently, we have nothing. It's totally become a jungle. Across the river there, and again, we, we just can't see anywhere. That's Tamarasan's house. Over to the right. Normally we'd be able to see the small temple, we can see nothing, so it's just really a jungle. So all we can try and do at this point, let's find a place where we go down, 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 into the water. Sorry for the earthquakes, just clean up. Okay, have we got it? Is it focusing? It's probably trying to focus on that leaf. Do we have a focus in the water? I think so. Okay, let's see if we can attract some of the local denizens. I see, the food goes in there and the food floats downstream, so they follow it down. Oh, we've got it. Yeah, look at this. It's still focusing on the leaves, though. Okay, okay, okay. Trying to focus.
also, I'm not sure. Have we been? Oh, there they are. I see. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. The fish here, okay, they are not the ayu. They are actually edible. But in the river where we are here, they don't really grow very large. The biggest ones we're looking at there are about, oh, they're not quite four inches long, about, about maybe 10 to 12 centimeters long. They're trapped. They're trapped between the weir on the left and the weir on the right. And these guys are hungry. They are always viciously, viciously hungry. And I'm told in the old days that kids would come along here and would grab them and take them home and eat them, but uh, I haven't seen kids don't play in the river anymore at all. Let me try and get the focus better. It's still focusing on the leaves, isn't it? Sorry. Have we been getting any shots? Oh, there they are. Okay, I see, I see. I can't see for myself in the camera. Yeah, I can't see. And again, I don't have time for it today, but to do maintenance, you know, I've got to get my clippers out there and just start trimming a whole bunch of this stuff. But yeah, there they are. Look at this. Look at this. Beautiful. If I go down there, they will all run away, you know, absolutely. So I can't, uh, if I went down there and sat in the water really quietly and dropped little bits of food in, they might come back after about 10 or 15 minutes. And I might try to do that later, but there's no point in trying to do that now. They will just run away if I go down there. So. And I said, they're called, I think they're called yam, Yamame. It's a kind of an ayu. They're kind of a river trout. And maybe in English that would be the word or something, mountain trout or something. Although I don't think it's the same thing that you would think of as a trout over in Canada. And normally these guys are hungry, you know. They are keeping very clear of mosquitoes. Down by the river here there are no mosquitoes whatsoever. Because those guys in there are so hungry. There's no chance for mosquitoes to survive in the water down there. Up in the town, two stories above me, there are mosquitoes. People leave the water in buckets in their backyard or something. But the down here. The water, it's, it's actually kind of warm right now. It's a mountain stream. It comes right out of the mountain. But it, there's no glaciers or snow or high mountains behind us. The hills are about 300 meters high. And the water comes out of the groundwater, seeping out bit by bit by bit. But by the time it gets to me here, it's already been winding through the town. It's very shallow on a hot day. So this water, nobody would call it cold. And uh, if, it, if there's a time with not too much rain and the water is still and quiet, it gets quickly really, really uh, full of green and algae and stuff like that. And then a typhoon comes along and bang, cleans it all up and tosses the gravel and scours it clean. So there's not all that much food in there sometimes. So the fish come and go. They, they come and they go. But uh, mostly they take care of the mosquitoes. Let me throw them a bit more food. Hang on a sec.
If anybody's got a better, uh, di not diagnosis, what's the word, I don't know, what species this is, you know, I could try and get some pictures later on, see the side stripes. They've got really a, quite a vivid, what's it called, lateral line, once they get bigger. And if I go down there and sit there, you know, the big ones stay away. They're, they're smart. They've got big because they're smart. And the little ones will come really close. <laughs> I guess that's why they're small, whatever. So. Anyway, there we have it. Good, 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 good. Okay. What does I see in the chat here? What, let's make a bunch of these streams? I don't know, you know. I don't have any special, uh, anything to bring to the table for this, you know. There's lots of places to put the camera. We could put cameras outside, you know. Time, time, time. Time. Yeah, the lateral line, it's kind of black with a white side stripe on it, you know. You were looking at it from up top, I'm sorry, but uh, yeah. It must be a distinctive thing. I've been told these are Yamame, but I don't know. The people that told me that didn't really seem like they knew what they, they were talking about, so I don't know. Okay, 9.15, show and tell time. <clears throat> Someone's asking, are there any bears in Ome? In recent years, there have been, absolutely, with the decrease in population around here and the... Uh, uh, lack of uh, sustenance, lack of nutrients in the forest and stuff. There used to be, the forest has changed, you know, whatever. It's a different story, different story, different story. Let's get into that later. Mm -hmm. There used to be a huge natural forest here, but in the post-war years, it was totally, totally destroyed. The natural forest was totally harvested and sugi, cedar trees, were planted because that was the tree of choice for home building in Japan through the 40s, 50s, and 60s. There was a desperate need for lumber, so they planted uh, sugi trees, cedar trees everywhere. Massive pollen everywhere, devastated the environment. The needles fall, acid soil, acid water in the streams. It was just, it destroyed it. The mindset has changed now, and those are no longer being planted here. They're being cut down. People are putting in more natural or letting a more natural environment grow. Lots of things have changed over the past few years. Someone says they are Japanese pond smelt. I don't know. I, I really, really, really don't know. I'm sorry. The only other creatures that I see in the river down there, there are a bajillion tiny little crabs. Not crabs like we could eat, but tiny crabs in there under if i get down there and turn over rocks almost every rock has little crabs that scuttle away from out under the rock and they migrate they must do something away from the river because they migrate up from the river and they try and do something mate or or die or whatever or lay eggs or something up here in the embankment and they climb they've come up here to my house they climb through the air evacuation pipes they come through to the to the house inside little tiny crabs Okay, let's uh, let's look at some prints. We have one. Okay, I better put a camera on, Dave. Put the camera on, please. This camera. Okay, tell you what we'll do. I'm gonna I'm gonna cover up the outside for a couple of minutes. But what we'll do? Let's do this show and tell. And then I will take down my camera and take down the print camera and we'll leave the natural camera on when I'm finished the stream. We'll just let it run for a while and if you want to watch it, you can watch it. But let me cover it up for a moment here just to do our work and do our show and tell. Then we will come back to the outside camera in a couple of minutes. Is that okay? Have we got a deal? Let's do this. So just bear with me for a couple of minutes. Let's do some of our actual you know, the thing we're supposed to be here to do, and then we'll get back to relaxing on something. Today's show and tell are some prints that came in two days ago. They're from Yahoo Auction. And they 
are one of the most spectacular things we have ever seen here at Mokohanka. The guy put them up for auction. He put a list price on them of 5,000 yen and nobody bid. Nobody thought it was worthwhile. Nobody thought it was interesting or anything. What we're reading here, it says, I wouldn't have been able to read this by myself, but finally I did figure it out. This is the Nani Hana. This is Nam. Anyway, it's Naniwa. It's, it's what they call Ateji. Characters have been chosen for their sound. Naniwa is the poetic name for the area we now know as the Kansai. So this would be Kyoto or Osaka. This particular group of prints comes from Osaka scenes. It's Naniwa Meisho Jushu. And it's Hiroshige. And this is the mark of the publisher who did this reproduction version. And this is actually a katakana symbol of he, which Hiroshige used as, uh, as a logo during his life. And there's the size. These are not match label prints. They're not postcard prints. There's something in between match label and postcard. And they're reproductions of a normal Oban print. If you imagine a print, horizontal in size, the same dimensions as a great wave, if you imagine one of these, these prints are reproductions, dot for dot, line for line, of an Oban size print. And we're going to get my finger in there for comparison. There's Dave's finger. And this is a reproduction of a full sized Oban print. And the set is from Hiroshige. It's 10 views of Osaka. Or they called it at the time, it's called Naniwa. And I don't remember what they are one by one by one. I gave a link to the mods that has the original Hiroshige designs on them. Somebody's got it there. Korin, thank you. You're overworking today. Thank you very much, sir. Eggs, eggs, eggs all around. Korinigami has posted a link here to a website that has all the original versions of these. I can read some of this. This is a Sumiyoshi uh, something something. It's a festival at Sumiyoshi Shrine <coughs> and it's one of the, uh, it's a, a sort of a mock battle between two, two uh, uh, people dressed as samurai. It's a dance. These are dancers, not, not fighters. They're dancers at Sumiyoshi Jinja. And just what can I say? What can I say? So what you're seeing is sort of a Heian era scene, but this is how they mocked up the, mocked up the, uh, the festival. And when we first saw these, there was a thought that it might be, these could have been perhaps metal blocks. So maybe I thought it's possible this wasn't carved. What they could have done perhaps, I thought, was this. Remember, this is just before the war. This is 1920s, 1930s. <clears throat> I thought they might have drawn the key lines and photographically made a metal block in zinc. This is possible in the 1920s and 30s, and then done it from the metal block. I got it under my microscope and looked at it and realized, no, this is actually carved. Every line and dot of these are carved. And there's a bunch of places that all of us can see. How far can I zoom in? Okay, look at this dude here on the right-hand side. He has a, a, a kimono pattern that's actually sort of not socially acceptable these days, but whatever, we all know this is a traditional Asian pattern, nothing to do with uh, European 20th century history. This is an old pattern, but look at one point of the pattern there. I can't, I don't have a, I don't have a tiny pointer. See the character? One of the characters has a little chip. It's a pop taken out of it. One of the manji characters. That one's complete. This next one above it has a pop. The carver has actually glitched for a second, and as he was going cut, 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 ooh, oh, I popped it out. And he's got a decision to make he's got to either leave it as it is or fix it. And I think given the situation, he decided to leave it as it is. But these kind of things, and they're all over the place, many, many all over the place. You can see this tells us, it's one of the things that tells us that this was carved and not photographically reproduced. There are 10 prints in the set. It cost me 5,000 yen. And a better deal in my life for 5,000 yen I will never, ever, ever find. We joked the other day about the book I got for 141 yen and wow, I could free, but it was junk. This is my, look at, look at the gradation, look at the depth of color. 
Look at the calligraphy carving. This is magnificent. It's of no interest to me at all how much I paid, just that I can own these objects and look at them and enjoy them and pass them on and show them off. So happy to have these. As I said, I took them upstairs to the printer's room in the morning and they got, didn't get any work done for the rest of the morning. Absolutely no work done. They're not perfect. Can you see the mistake? Can you see the carver's mistake here? Anybody can see this. I've made the same mistake many times on stream. Can you see the mistake? Sorry for the old carver. We're embarrassing him here. You can see it's called Hori Nuki. The water block and or the post block. One of them, the carver carved just a bit too much and he missed a bit of color at the bottom of the pole. I, there's no way that's going to be intentional. That little white spot there should have been on the color block for the post. The other thing, the guy's skirt, whatever. The social issues are different. I'm talking about carving issues. I have no interest whatsoever in the social issues here. <laughs> it's a, a port. It's a landing stage where boats uh, can land. These, these are boats going up and down the Sumida River. Uh, not Sumida. This is in Osaka. It's a landing stage. Someone says, look at the gradation on the steps. I don't think there's a gradation on the steps. It's colors cut. It's itabokashi, maybe the top edge of each of those color blocks is carved a bit roughly. Look at my finger in the middle of this crowd of people. <laughs> look at my finger. <laughs> incredible, incredible, incredible. I could, we could just saw the girls again upstairs. They just geeked out on this for hour after hour after hour. They were just saying, look at this, look at this, look at this. And then somebody else would see something else. It was, no, look at this, look at this, look at this. We will get them photographed. This one is interesting to me. This one says it's a rice market. But I don't get what's happening. It looked to me like a festival or something. These guys are coming out of this door carrying wooden buckets and ladles. And I at first thought it was water. I thought they were doing mizumaki like people are doing in Tokyo on a hot day today. I thought they were tossing water all over the street to help cool things down. And uh, perhaps that's what's going on. But the original caption of the original print says it's a famous rice market. And we have here people haggling. We have people with the soroban. So I can get it. It does look like a market scene. But what the dudes are doing, they're, they're bidding, they're haggling maybe. But what these guys are doing, running out the door with ladles. This guy's running away to avoid getting splashed. It could be water. I don't know. You tell me. I don't know. Whatever. We'll get him photographed. Next one. This is a night market. And this is interesting. It's a de depiction of a night scene. So we have these lanterns are supposed to be glowing, throwing their light. And this is fun. This is a night market. Look at the details here. We got a guy, he's selling fish. Not sure what's selling there. What is this? It looks like some kind of brazier for cooking, is it? Is it a well? Maybe it's a well. Different people hanging around, and what are they selling in the back? This guy's got a light. You can imagine this glowing at night. What's he selling? You tell me. Someone's asking about raids. We don't have raids blocked. Raids come in here all the time. So if you're trying to do that, I have nothing set at this side to stop this. If you want to talk about it later, write to me. We'll talk about it with the mods. We do get raids. This, I think, this one, I believe, where, where's my finger? This, I think, is a fortune teller. And my guess is he's doing palm readings. We have a, a sign, palm readings. He's got his face hidden with the basket. 
What's this guy selling? Brushes? Makeup brushes? I don't know. Let's move on. There's 10 of them. Nothing exotic about this. Straight Hanami party out in a park somewhere. Dancing, drinking, and Hanami. No, blue tarp. Not in those days. No. <laughs> Nice touch. Yeah. This is presumably some kind of procession, I believe, from their, their version. The Yoshiwara was Tokyo, but Osaka had its own area, too. Noise outside. Action. Fish market. You want a fish? Here, I'll toss you a fish. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to give these priority. We are way behind with photography on this, but I'm going to give these priority to Watanabe-san to get these photographed. I'm going to ask her to interrupt her normal flea market work for a while. So tomorrow or maybe early next week, I'm going to ask her to get these photographed, and we're going to get them in the collection as soon as we can. They're just too rich not to share. We were stunned by the quality. The more we look at these, the more we learn, the more we're amazed at these. And I have no socks. Whatever socks I had are, are miles away. Just nothing. No socks left at all. It says on the lantern. Looks like a festival again. I'm not sure. Okay. There we are. There we are. There we are. Okay, so as I said, we'll bring those to you next week. It's sort of a tease today just to show them to you a little bit, but I was just so excited about getting these. I just wanted to share them and, uh, and put them out into the world. Okay, we've come to our time. We've done 90 minutes. What we'll do is, I said, what we'll do is this. I really now have lots of work to do, so what I'll do is I'll finish doing my embossing right now. I have, I think, 10 sheets left. Then when I've done my embossing, I will turn off the indoor cameras, I'll leave on the outside camera, and we'll just let it run for a while, while we do our own work. They're still hanging around waiting for food. What I might also do, tell you what, after I finish my work here, I'll go get the shears and I'll see if I can trim some of that green stuff from out of the way here. So hang on then, we'll see if I can let this thing run for a while. But let me finish my work first here. Ten or so more sheets left.
Okay, so here's how we go. What I'm going to do is this and then. I, my work is finished. I've got to get to work with the Shiyami son, got to get my mask on, all that sort of stuff. So I'm going to hit two buttons. I'm going to shut the stream down and then I'm going to restart it again so to separate the real stream from the following stream and we'll point it at the river. I'll go and get my clippers. I'll cut something. I'll throw some more food. So we'll do this. Stream off and then stream on for those who want to hang around for a while and watch things. Thanks very much. I'll see you again on Saturday, almost certainly back in Asakusa. But then I got to get back out here. I got to get back out. Okay, signing off, signing on. See you soon. Thanks for watching.